The telephone rings. Hi, Dad, it's me, Aaron. Well, hi, honey. It's been such a long time since I've heard you. Dad, I, I just spoke to Megan on the telephone, and she said that everyone was getting together this year for Thanksgiving. It would be the first time that we've all been together in a long time. Can I come home, Dad? Well, sure you can, honey. You've always been able to come home. This is your home. Well, Dad, I, I thought that you never wanted to see me again for all the bad things I said and did to you. Honey, you just come on home. I think there's something you need to see here. Thanks, Dad. When are you going to be here? Well, I'll be there early tomorrow morning. I want to have breakfast with everyone. Will you be careful? I will, Dad. I love you. I love you too, honey. As soon as they hung up the phone, Dad fell to his knees and thanked God for answered prayers. When he finished, he walked into the kitchen and he grabbed a sheet of paper and a pencil and he sat down at the table to make out a a grocery list of all the things he was going to need for Thanksgiving dinner. He wanted to make sure that he had everything that everyone liked to eat and snack on. Then he went around to the cabinets and checked to see what kind of spices he was going to need for the desserts. Then he went to the store. He grabbed a shopping cart and he started down every aisle, checking off the list, making sure he didn't forget anything. When he came up the last aisle, he couldn't get another thing in the cart. He then went up, sta- uh, up to the sh- checkout, and Cindy was there. She always checked him out. Wow, you plan on feeding an army, or you're not going to come back for a while? He says, well, Cindy, everyone's coming home for Thanksgiving this year, and I want to make sure I have everything that they like to eat. Well, did you leave anything on the shelf? Well, I, I left a few things. Well, you have a good Thanksgiving. You too, Cindy. Dad went home, and it took him quite a while to put all the groceries away. And the next thing he did was he went to the video store and rented some movies and some games. That's what the grandkids like. Then he came back home, and he spent the rest of the day straightening up the house and making sure there was a lot of extra towels in the bathrooms. He went to bed early that night. He got up early the next morning, and he went out on the back porch, and he got the pumpkin. He peeled the pumpkin and cleaned it chunked it up and threw it in a pot of water on the stove. He then put on a pot of coffee. He started making the homemade biscuits, and he heard a car pull up the driveway. He looked out the window, and he saw that it was Aaron. He couldn't wait for her to come to the door, so he went outside and met her right at the car. As soon as she stepped outside, he gave her a big hug and a kiss, and then he went around the car, to meet Hunter. This was the first time that he met Hunter. Aaron was so upset with her dad that she didn't invite him to her wedding. In fact, dad didn't know they even got married until three months after they were married. So he went up and Hunter stuck out his hand. Dad shook his hand, then he gave him a big hug. You see, dad comes from a family that we call a kissy-huggy family, and you get a hug and a kiss whether you want it or not. He told Hunter, he said, son, we have a lot to talk about and catching up on. We'll talk about it later. Then he went back around and put his arm around Aaron, and they walked into the house and down the hallway to Aaron's old bedroom. When Aaron and Hunter walked into the room, Hunter started laughing, and Aaron turned to him, well, what? Your room? Well, I was 18 years old when I lived here last. I can tell. Aaron had posters and pictures of all of her teen idols all over the wall. She turned to her dad. Dad, I can't believe you didn't change this room. Well, honey, that's how I remember you best. So I left your your room and everyone else's room just like it was, so I could remember you all. So he left them there to get settled in their room and went back in the kitchen, and he started making the gravy. Started to fry the, the bacon and the sausage and the ham. Aaron came into the kitchen. Well, can I help you, Dad? Sure, honey, you can stir the gravy. Say, Dad, what was it that you wanted to show me? Oh, yeah, come here, honey. They walked over to the kitchen table. Does this table remind you of anything? Aaron looked at the table and thought for a moment. No, Dad, it's the same table we've had here for years. How about this chair? She thought another moment. No, that chair doesn't remind me of anything, Dad. 
Well, honey, that's your chair. You've sat in that chair from the time you were a little girl, big enough to sit at the big table. And you're the only one that can fill it. No matter how far you're away or how long you're gone, you're the only one that can fill that chair. Well, thanks, Dad. I really need to hear that. They went back over and started fixing breakfast. And just then, Dad heard the front door open, and the whole house just filled up with noise. The grandkids are here. So Dad went in the living room, and he gave them all a big hug and a kiss. Kid, the grandkids right away took off for downstairs to start playing their games. Jerry was there with his family, and Scott with his, and, and Megan with hers. They all got settled in their rooms, and then they all came in the kitchen to have breakfast. Well, Dad, it looks like we got another big spread here to eat today. Yes, yeah, Scott, we do. We have just about everything you guys like. We have biscuits and gravy. We have eggs. We have pancakes and, and waffles. We have fresh fruit, and we have fresh-baked cinnamon apples. So everyone had their breakfast. They sat around for a little while and talked. And then Scott asked his dad, well, Dad, what's on the agenda for today? Well, we're going to do like we always do. We're going to make desserts today, and then tomorrow we're going to spend making the Thanksgiving meal. Oh, great. When are we going to start? Well, we can start now if you want. Great. So they all went into the kitchen. Dad told all the spouses to sit at the table and just watch. This is the tradition that we do every year, the fun that we have together as a family. So Dad went over the stove and took the pumpkin off and put it in a, in a bowl. Dad and Megan and Aaron, every year, it's been their tradition that they make fresh pumpkin pies. So they started to put the ingredients in, and then the girls remembered. Say, Dad, you remember the year when we almost forgot the sugar? Oh, yeah, I do. I didn't think you girls would remember that. Oh, yeah, Dad, we was just ready to put the pumpkins in the oven, and I stuck my finger in one of the pies to taste it, and I went, ooh. Then you stuck your finger in, and whoops, we forgot the sugar. We had to pour all that stuff back into the bowl and add sugar and mix it all up again and pour it back into pie shells. What a mess. Yeah, but it was fun, Dad. We'll never forget that. So we put the pies in the oven. And it was a tradition that Dad and the girls mixed everything up. And it was Jerry and Scott's responsibility. They were the official bakers. They timed everything, took it out, make sure it was right. And, of course, they had to taste it to make sure it met, made the, their approval to feed us all. And usually it took about one pie and three or four cookies each of each kind before we got their approval. <laughs> so the pumpkin pies were done, and then they made a cherry and an apple and then a custard. Then we started on the cookies. We mixed up all the cookie doughs. We, we usually make about 12 dozen cookies, three different kind. So we had all the dough mixed up, and then it happened. Aaron hit Jerry in the back of the head with a ball of dough, and then she hit Scott in the nose. The boys turned around and looked at them. Next thing you know, dough fight. They were throwing dough all over the place, and Dad just stood back and watched them, and all their spouses were sitting at the table laughing, and tears were coming down. They started taking pictures. They couldn't believe it. They were acting like little kids again. So after a while, they settled down and had to make up all new dough again. So one by one, the cookies started coming out, and of course, they met Jerry and Scott's approval. Everyone could eat them. They taste good enough. And then the very last thing we did was made a chocolate cake. Dad liked chocolate, and we always made one chocolate cake. And when it came out, and after it cooled, Aaron always put the icing on, and Megan did her thing that she always liked to do from the time she was a little girl. She put the sprinkles on the top. And then everybody jumped in and got everything washed and put away. And they were starting to go into the living room and sit down. And Dad turned to Jerry and <clears throat> said, Jerry, could you and Scott go downstairs and get my old trunk? You still have that old thing, Dad? Well, sure I do. All right, where's it at? And still the same spot? Yeah, it's behind the furnace on the shelf. All right, come on, Scott, let's go get it. So everybody else went into the living room and Dad sat down in his chair Jerry and Scott brought the old trunk up and set it on the floor in front of Dad. <clears throat> Aaron and Megan looked at him. Dad, do you still have that old thing? Yeah, I still have it. Boy, I remember when we used to want to get into it all the time, and you said, no, it's top secret, your special things, and you kept it locked and told us to keep out. 
Well, yeah, I told you that, but one thing about the lock, it never did work. I just want to tell you that so you wouldn't get into it. You mean we could have got in there all this time and found out what was in there? Yeah, you could have, but I'm glad you didn't. It's got some very special things in there, and I want to give them all to you right now. Well, what's in there, Dad? Well, honey, it's your whole life. What do you mean? Just then, Dad opened up the lid, and when he did, the whole house smelled of fresh-cut cedar. He reached into the trunk, and he pulled out a big, fat, thick black book and had Aaron's name on it. He handed it to her. Well, what's this, Dad? Honey, that's your whole life, as seen through my eyes and felt with my heart. I have every picture in there from the time you were born to the time you left home. I have every, every program that you were in. I have every newspaper clipping. I have little stories and sayings of everything that you ever said your whole life. It's all in this book, and I want you to have it. I don't need these memories anymore. I have enough to last me a lifetime. I want you to share it with your family. So he handed the book to her, and she opened it up and looked at it. Well, I remember doing this, Dad, but I didn't until I read it here. How do you remember all these things? Well, honey, I have a special way of remembering things. Then he reached in, he took out a book and gave it to Megan and to Jerry and to Scott. And they all started looking through the book and laughing. And they all started bringing back memories. Well, I remember this. I remember doing this. Dad, we don't know how you remember doing that we did all these things, and we did them. Well, what I do, honey, is I knew a long time ago that there would come a time when all you kids are going to be gone, and your mom and I are going to be by ourselves. And I wanted to remember everything that you ever did your whole life. And so now I didn't expect your mom to be gone, and I have no one to share all these things with now. So what I do is every day I go to the kitchen table, and I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with you kids. I look at that table, and I see you sitting at those chairs. I remember all the problems that were solved at that table, all the laughs and the giggles and the heartaches. Everything that was done each day was done at that table. If someone would come in and watch me as I eat my meals, they'd think I was crazy, laughing and talking and doing the things that I do. But that's how I remember you. And what I did was to remember everything was every night after every one of you went to bed and sleep, I would roll over and look at your mom and I'd watch her sleep. I thank God for sending her to me. She was so pretty. And I thank God for each one of you. And I started remembering what we did that day as a family and what each of you did. And then I started remembering what you did the day before and the day before that and the day before that. And pretty soon, I was able to remember everything that you did. And over time, I started writing those things down in a, on sheets of paper, and then eventually I put them in a book. And I want you to share all of these with your family now. Just then, the timer went off in the oven, and Dad went back into the kitchen. He had a ham in the oven, and that's what they're going to be eating and snacking on for the rest of the day. Then he checked to make sure the potato salad was ready and the baked beans and the macaroni and cheese. And the rest of the day, everybody just spent all the time showing their books to their families and talking and laughing, going over th things of times past. Later on that night, they all decided they better go to bed early because tomorrow was going to be a busy day. They had to get the Thanksgiving meal done. And around our house, if you... If you ever left Dad's house hungry, it was your fault, because we always had a lot of food. So everybody got in bed that night, and as the light was turned off, then it started. Good night, Dad. Good night, Aaron. Good night, Megan. Good night, Scott. Good night, Jerry. You'd think we're the Waltons. <laughs> it took about a half hour for everyone to say good night to everybody. And then as the last door closed, Dad laid there for a while, and then he got up and he walked downstairs to where all the grandkids were at. And he just stood there in the doorway looking at each one of them. They were laying all over the place. That's what they liked the best. He raised his hand to the Lord. and He thanked God for each one and said a prayer for each. 